I want to start this morning by asking a question. And this question comes from the work of Professor David Kelly at Stanford University. And David Kelly talks about this concept of creative confidence. And he talks about how, as children, we tend to embrace our creativity. Children run towards activities such as painting, coloring, drawing, building. But somewhere along the way, as we age, many of us stop engaging in these types of activities. Many of us stop seeing ourselves as creative. Many of us lose that creative confidence that we once had. We start saying things along the lines of, well, I know someone who's very creative. Me, not so much. And so my question for you this morning as we get started on this exciting day is if we can envision a scale, zero being not creative, 10 being creative. How many of you, by a show of hands, would put yourselves at the high end of that scale? I am, I am creative. No. What half the room? What half the room, give or take? So how do we, how do we unlock this creative confidence in those that might be questioning <coughs> their own creativity? Why is it that some of us can readily put up our hand and say, I, I'm creative, and others Maybe a little more reserved. How do we create opportunities in our organizations to unlock the creative passions that are within all of us and to channel those passions towards driving new innovations for our programs and services? You see, these are the questions that as an innovation and research unit we're asking. How do we unlock the creative potential that is in all of us, and come to rediscover our creative confidence, and take it one step further and create organizations where irrespective of position, title, or years of service, all staff come to rediscover their creative confidence. I want to share a short story with you. About a month and a half ago, I was in an innovation lab. An innovation lab is a space that our unit has introduced in our organization. And it's, it's not another meeting. It's not a workshop. It's a different kind of space. It's a space where a cross-section of our organization, staff from across all of our programs and services, as well as staff from various points in our organizational hierarchy, come together to explore together and co-create. They share stories of their experiences. They listen to the successes and the challenges, and then they work together to co-create new possibilities. And in this particular lab session, we had a mix. We had direct service delivery staff. We had uh, supervisory staff. We had senior management. And in this particular session, we also had executive management. And there was one individual. And this particular individual was a younger, younger staff, newer to our organization. And she participated in the session, but was more, more reserved. And towards the end of the lab, this individual found the courage in this context to say, you know, in the, in the years that I've been with this organization, I've had some ideas that I think would be helpful, but I wouldn't dare share them. I wouldn't tell my colleagues. I wouldn't tell my management team. I've been too afraid. I've kept them to myself. And in this moment, I, I was so encouraged and so inspired because I saw this as a pivotal moment, that this individual who had been sitting on their ideas because they'd been fearful to share them, found the courage to find her voice. It, suggested to me that we had created the right conditions in this space 
for this individual to feel safe enough to say, I have an idea. I have an idea. And you see, we didn't impose this conversation. We created the right conditions and this conversation emerged. Just like I don't believe we can impose creativity or innovation on a work group. I can't say to a program area, okay, go innovate. We have to create the right conditions and allow the ideas and the creativity and the innovation to emerge. You see, I think about innovation not as a particular tool, not as looking at for a particular process. And don't get me wrong, those are important. We need processes, we need tools. But I think about it as an investment, an investment in unlocking the creative confidence in each and every staff, irrespective of position, title, or years with our organization. Because creativity and innovation aren't limited to a select few. We all have the ability to be creative. We all have ideas. We all have ideas for changing things. So how did we get here? How did we get here? Well, it wasn't a straight path towards innovation. We didn't set out, actually, to foster a culture of innovation. It was a journey that looked more like this, with twists and turns. But with each twist and with each turn, we gained a new perspective, we gained a new insight, a new skill set, a new set of experiences that have brought us, when combined, to where we are today. And let me just, just preface this by saying, while I may be the one standing here in front of you this morning, this journey has been the result of a large number of staff across our social services department under the leadership of our commissioner, Dr. Hugh Drew. And so, about, about 10 years ago or so, Commissioner connected our organization to Excellence Canada. Excellence Canada is an organization that helps other organizations, public, private, achieve quality and excellence standards. And over the last 10 years, we've been working with Excellence Canada. And just last year, we've achieved the highest level of quality um, recognition that, that the organization offers. And what this did is it set our focus on continuous improvement, always striving to be better, process improvement, quality standards. While we were exploring quality standards, we also redefined this concept of leadership, looking toward the leader in every chair, separating the concept of leadership from the concept of management. And if we separate leadership from management, Everybody, irrespective of position, title, or years of experience, can exercise leadership in their respective roles, in their spheres of influence. A leader in every chair. And while we were adopting the perspective of a leader in every chair, we were also exploring servant leadership and the principles <coughs> Servant leadership as a guide. Servant leadership, very briefly, is about shifting our focus towards focusing on the growth of others. So, as a manager, for example, asking myself, are my team members growing? Are they growing as individuals? Are they growing in their roles? Are we growing as a team? Are we growing as a team? Am I providing them with the right tools, supports, resources to be successful? Am I jumping in and trying to be a problem solver? Or am I encouraging and supporting them to grow through working through some of the challenges that they might experience daily? Am I listening well enough? Am I listening and really understanding their daily experiences, their successes, and their challenges? And at the same time, we came to recognize that we needed mechanisms 
to move ideas through our organization. At team meetings, for example, ideas would emerge, or when staff would attend a conference, they'd come back, an idea would be tabled, and then the day-to-day -day priorities would take over, and the idea would sit. Weeks, months, years would pass. And so out of this focus, our innovation research unit emerged. And our work is informed and guided by these areas of focus. We support our programs and services to continuously improve. From the perspective that there's a leader in every chair, turning to servant leadership principles as our guide, and supporting not only the growth of ideas, but the growth of the individuals behind those ideas to exercise leadership in moving those ideas forward. There's a dual focus there, both the individual and the idea. And so we see our purpose as unlocking creative potential, one voice at a time. So how have we been doing this? Well, there's a three-pronged approach that has emerged. The first is this belief that every voice matters. You know, our direct service delivery staff that are working in the communities day in and day out that are interacting with those that are receiving our services. They know full well what's working. They know what's not working. They know what's, uh, what needs to change. They know where change needs to happen. And it's those voices that we need to listen to. We need to create pathways so those voices can emerge, can be heard. But even if we create the pathways, we have to create the right conditions so those staff will step forward and say, let me tell you about this experience I had. Not just the successful one, where things have fallen down. Every voice matters. At the same time, we've created spaces to dream and explore. So the innovation lab space that I talked to you about, for example. Spaces where staff can come together for a few hours, facilitated by our unit, and step away from the processes the uh, regulations, the legislation, take a time out and say, let's put that aside and let's talk about what could be, what if, why not? Or even more boldly, why are we doing things that way? Or this isn't working. Being able to talk and explore and share our experiences. Spaces to dream and explore. And this space didn't exist in our organization. Um, it's not another meeting. It's not a chair, uh, agenda-driven chaired meeting. It's a space to explore and co-create, work hands-on to grow new ideas. Grounded in the belief that every voice matters. All staff, irrespective of position, title, or years with the organization, are able to attend a lab session. Just as we've recently introduced an e-town hall platform, and once it's fully rolled out, all staff across our programs and services across all our community offices, from their computer, can log on and start a conversation. And we're seeing, in the few months that we've been uh, introducing this town hall, we've had over a thousand visits from staff across our organization, across our offices, also across our hierarchy. And it's becoming a virtual lab, if you will, where staff at different points in our hierarchy are sharing and growing on each other's ideas. And we're seeing Conversations around health and wellness, servant leadership, workplace culture, person-centered care emerge. And the third area is lead, leading through story. Every year, we hold an annual innovation and research forum, a day planned by staff for staff, in which staff, irrespective of position, title, or years of experience, are invited to tell their story. Talk about their journey. Talk about the idea that they've been leading. What's worked? What didn't work? Where did they fall down? How did they pick themselves up again? How did they overcome the challenges? And it's giving others the spark, a spark of encouragement, a spark of inspiration. New connections are formed. New ideas are emerging. New leaders are emerging. One of the lessons that we've learned is that working in silos within the same four walls with the same people reduces the likelihood of generating ideas for innovation. 
stepping outside our disciplines and coming together with others who will bring a completely different perspective is so critical. Oftentimes we only share ideas with those that work in our close circles. Rather than saying, well, my discipline is A, your discipline is B, and you don't, wouldn't understand what I do, I don't understand what you do, we need to move away from that thinking and embrace, embrace that, yes, we come from completely different disciplines. Tell me your perspective. What does this look like from your perspective? And let me tell you mine. And I have no doubt through, those, through that conversation, new understanding, new appreciation, and I'm sure new ideas will emerge. Because increasingly there's an awareness that innovation doesn't always result from solitary geniuses having eureka moments, but instead arises from collaborative creativity. Collaborative creativity. And this notion of collaborative creativity really has been our guide as we've worked with Durham College over the last number of years. And these are examples of some of our projects that we've completed successfully over the last couple of years. But what's behind each one of these projects, what's behind each one of these points is a team. A team comprised of faculty from Durham College, students from Durham College, staff from our department, at various points, from various points in our organizational hierarchy, that have come together shared their stories of experience with each other, talked about their ideas for improvement, and together implemented new projects to bring about change. One project, for example, our LEAP to Durham College project. LEAP is a learning, earning, and parenting program. It's a uh, program for young, young parents on social assistance. And staff members in that program saw a need. They had ideas around how to support more young parents on social assistance pursue higher education. And those staff came together and through Debbie's office and faculty at Durham College, we all came together and shared our stories, shared our experiences, applied for a grant, were successful, and together co-created a wraparound program to support young parents in the transition from our Learning, Earning, and Parenting program to Durham College. An example of how ideas that came directly from the staff delivering the program, they know what's working, they know what's not working, and they know where change needs to happen. And the impact of this, the impact on the staff as they exercise their leadership in making this happen, the impact <coughs> on the students that were involved and the faculty that were involved, and most <coughs> importantly, the impact of the young parents as they transition to higher education. And I remember sitting down with Debbie in the spring of 2011, very soon after I had moved into the innovation and research role. And Debbie said, so tell me about this innovation and research focus. And I said, well, it's a good question. I have a few ideas, I have a vision. And we sat and we talked and together we said, let's bring our staff and our faculty and students together, and let's listen to their ideas and see where it takes us. And we've just, we've just begun. We're only just getting started. And so I want to come back to where we started, to the words of David Kelly. I remember one day my best friend Brian was working on a project. He was making a horse out of the clay that our teacher kept under the sink. And at one point, one of the girls that was sitting at his table, seeing what he was doing, leaned over and said to him, that's terrible, that doesn't look anything like a horse. Right? And Brian's shoulders sank, and he wadded up the clay horse, and he threw it back in the bin. I kind of never saw Brian do a project like that uh, ever again. And I wonder how often that happens, you know? It seems like when I tell that story of Brian to my class, <coughs> see, a lot of them want to come up after class and tell me about their similar experience, how a teacher shut them down or how a student was particularly cruel to them. It would be really great if you didn't let people divide the world into the creatives and the non-creatives like it's some God-given thing. And to have people realize that they're naturally creative 
You know, and that those natural people should let their ideas fly. So what I take from what Professor Kelly is saying, this idea of being open to embracing creativity. If somebody draws a horse that doesn't quite look like my vision of a horse, I, rather than shutting that down, embracing, embracing that difference, working to understand that difference, asking questions. Tell me about your creativity. Tell me about your creative perspective. And not allowing us to divide ourselves into the creatives and the non-creatives. Coming to rediscover this creative confidence. Because each of us, each of you, have a voice. You have something unique to share, a story that needs to be heard, a talent that needs to be offered. And you see, leadership is characterized by those who find their own voice and who, regardless of formal position, inspire others to find theirs. And those voices will emerge if we create the right conditions. When we feel safe to say, I have an idea. When we feel safe to say, I've been thinking about it. When we feel safe to say, why are we doing that? See, when we feel safe inside our organizations, we'll naturally combine our talents and our strengths. When we feel safe, we'll be open for collaboration. When we feel safe, we'll be open for innovation. When we feel safe, we can move away from a climate in which staff are questioning their own creativity to creating the kind of space where all staff, all of us, irrespective of position, title, or years of experience, feel free to let our ideas fly. And I believe it begins with the belief that every voice matters. The next step is to listen. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day today.